Welcome, in this lesson I'm going to show you the seven best hybrid picking exercises for guitar. Hybrid picking is the technique where we use the pick and the fingers with the right hand at the same time. If you want to seamlessly switch between a pick style playing and a finger style playing, hybrid picking is really great for that. Also, if you're a pick player and you want to play some chords and you don't want to always have to strum them, then hybrid picking is also really great for that. Or also, if you just want to speed up your lead line playing for single note playing or for soloing and improvising on the guitar, then a hybrid picking technique for alternating some of those single notes is also really useful for that and all of these things. And all of these hybrid picking techniques work equally well if you're playing acoustic guitar or electric guitar. So first I'm going to introduce and explain the absolute foundation of solid finger style playing and hybrid picking playing. And this comes straight from the tried and true pedagogy of classical guitar training. So it's gonna be an excellent foundation to have. Then I'm going to show you five really fun and really straightforward um, kind of difficult, but very useful um, hybrid picking exercises for the right hand that can be applied to playing chords and kind of finger picking in any situation. And then lastly, I'm going to show you two ways to use hybrid picking to speed up uh, single note playing and improvising on the guitar in like a soloing context. We have a lot to cover. Let's get into it. <laughs> I'm Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com. On this channel, I teach on a wide variety of topics, a lot of music theory, mapping out the fretboard, improvisation, some jazz guitar, some finger style, some songwriting, all kind of aimed at getting the fundamentals down so we can express ourselves more freely, so we can get after those feelings that we want from music. Uh, so if you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and hit the bell. I put out a video every Tuesday. So this foundational technique that I want to introduce to you first, and then we'll get to those seven specific exercises is something called planting with the right hand. This is absolutely crucial for right hand technique, for solo guitar technique, uh, because what it does is it gives us the security, the confidence, the consistency, the tone, the timbre, the control over these things uh, when we do what's called planting with the right hand. So this has to do with finger picking, finger style, using finger picks, using your nails, not using the, uh, your you're just the skin of your fingers or uh, with hybrid picking in this context, all of that kind of all applies. Planting is this powerful, powerful technique. Most people haven't heard of it unless they've studied classical guitar. That's why I like to grab from these other, all these areas of guitar and apply it to every other area so we can get the most out of our practice. But uh, planting is simply the idea that you have this tiny moment of preparing a note where you're placing it, where, you're, where your finger is physically on the string. Uh, you have this moment of just kind of checking in securely. Am I there? Am I on that spot? Does it feel the same? Does it feel right? You know, kind of like stabilizing yourself. With finger style and hybrid picking alike, we often just kind of swoop in and, try, and, and grab for a note and hope, and hope uh, it's the way we want it to sound. Well, it's mostly not going to be unless we do this planting thing. Um, because we're sometimes mm -hmm. scrape the note in a different way or land on it slightly differently. So planting is you land on it in this way where you, you are mm -hmm. creating this habit and this knowledge. And I'll do it really slowly and kind of show you how at first you might like land on it and then shift, right? You might land on a note and I'm just doing these open strings. So the exercise I'm going to give you first is just you pluck the pick and then you plant and you pluck on the next string and then you plant and you pluck on the next string. Now at first this might be like, how is it possible that this is what we're supposed to do? Well, notice how I'm kind of like adapting sometimes with my fingers. Well, <laughs> if you need to adapt your finger to get it to that spot where you know it's going to get the sound that you want, why in the world would you get that same consistent sound all the time if you don't get used to that, right? So planting is really happening all the time, uh, technically, in, in a, especially a classical guitar context or for anyone who's worked on it. Um, but sometimes it's just such a quick moment that um, it's not necessarily audible. So I'm doing it right now. And you can actually see that I'm doing it right now. I'll slow it down a little bit. As soon as I pluck the previous note, I'm preparing. So the plant of the next note is actually, I think of it as more kind of connected to the previous note. Notice I stopped, but I landed on this next planted note because I'm thinking of it as, as soon as I pluck the previous note, I plant on the next note. So if I pause, I'm ready, I'm planted, I'm stable, right? So right here I can have this feeling of, is this where I want my finger to be? With classical guitar, it makes sense because you want to have such a specific spot of landing on the flesh and a little bit of touching the nail, and then so you can pluck off with the nail. I just recently, um, after, uh, 20 years of playing with my nails, um, I recently chopped them off. 
a few months ago. I'm going to do a video on uh, that experience and playing classical guitar with fingertips uh, soon. But um, right now, the technique of planting and kind of getting familiar with whatever way we're doing finger style and hybrid, the planting is always relevant. It's always there. Right? So I am muting the string a little bit. I'm muting the string just a little bit um, for a moment because I'm because I'm because I'm preparing it. Right? So I hope that makes sense. How are we gonna get a consistent sound without that knowledge of yes, I'm physically right where I want to be, at the right spot of the finger, right angle, and everything it needs to be the same every time to get the same sound every time. It makes perfect sense, but we don't often practice that way. So you want this consistency of yep, every time. Notice how kind of full and clear those sounds are. If I do this, pretty, pretty much the same every time, right? So try that for yourself and see if just with one plucking finger, in this case with your middle finger, because we're gonna be holding the pick because we're doing hybrid, does it sound the same every time? If not, continuing to work on planting is the answer. I had a classical guitar teacher that talked about how the right hand, and this is, applies to hybrid picking, of course, the right hand is the expressive hand. We don't, you know, we think so much about what notes are we playing, what frets are we playing, we're watching people's left hands all the time, stuff like that. But the right hand is the is the emotional one. The right hand is what gives you the goosebumps and, and gets you to express things because all the dynamics are there. The tone is there. The, you know, so your, your speed, your timbre, you know, all of this, even though you have to change speed with the left hand too. But so much of the expression is the right hand. So again, just emphasizing how important this control and stability is with the right hand. Okay, so the first exercise is just exactly what I already showed you. And you already, you're sold on planting now, so you gotta make sure you're planting. But it's simply this, you're gonna pluck with the pick on the, on the fourth string, and then finger, finger, finger with your middle, and then, well, this would be um, the M finger, the A finger, and uh, I think sometimes it's referred to as E. The, the pinky finger is not a classical guitar, is not used in classical guitar, so it's kind of, um, has its own labeling, we'll just call it the pinky, but you're gonna use middle finger, ring finger, pinky after that. So pick, middle, ring, pinky, and you're just gonna go ascending, okay? Nice and boring exercise to get that down. Okay, once you can do that though, I want you to take that fourth string and play around with an E natural minor scale along the fourth string. And if you don't know the structure of that, then this is great to get you to, oops, I played the wrong note there, to get you to study that. One, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, one. Uh, one, one, seven, flat six, five, four, flat three, two, one, flat seven, one. So uh, you can really do that on any other strings too. You, know, you, can, you can play along the fifth string or whatever. But the point is, we need to repeat this right hand thing so much. Um, that once you can do it reasonably well and you just need to practice it a lot, I want you to start making music with it as soon as possible. So this is a fun way to improvise. It's really fun to do this. And if you watch my right hand, look how I'm kind of like jolting the, the jump to the next note. That's the planting. I'm preparing that next note definitely before I have to play it. Okay, so this is a nice, lovely way to make some music. You know, you can sit for hours and just improvise with that and feel like you're expressing something with it while getting that really necessary, just physical conditioning that we need with the right hand, which is very much gonna take some time to kind of build the muscles, build the independence, build the dexterity that you need. After that, this is still with exercise one, I just want you to take other chords. So I'm taking a C chord, then a first inversion G chord, and then an A minor chord, and practicing just that, that up and down. Do any, any chord you want, I'm kind of, a minor, A minor over G. Just kind of practicing with that. You can go, you know, any any four uh, chords that use four strings somewhere. Um, practice around with that in some other way. So uh, those we're going to practice several kind of patterns with the right hand and. Um, do that, do those different things each time with it. So the other one is just descending. So we don't need to go over it too much because you're just re you're just repeating that same kind of work, but with, you're playing the pick first and then you're going pinky, ring, middle. 
So of course, do it just with open strings first, always. And we're listening for how consistent is it? Does it feel the same? Does it sound the same every time? And you gotta be planting, okay? Once you can do that, then you add the scale. So I hiccuped a little, that's fine, of course. Do this, you know, you can slow down, you can speed up. Don't use a metronome with this. It's, metronome's only good if you're needing to work on time for some reason. We're working on this right now, just the security, the consistency. If you're in time a little bit, of course, great. But pause, slow down, feel that consistency, then try speeding up a little. Okay, so then take some other chords. I'm gonna take that C chord again, and that G chord again. Cool, now it's feeling like I'm getting warmed up into it. I'm really feeling better about the tone that I'm getting with the hybrid. So the next exercise is going to be ascending and descending combination. So you're gonna go uh, pick, middle, ring, pinky, ring, middle. But there's a big twist to it that's gonna make it harder and very, very powerful to practice. And that's what, that we're gonna do something called a full plant. Okay, so you're gonna pluck with the pick and then right away you're going to plant all three of the next fingers all at once. Okay, this is gonna be hard. Um, and then you're gonna control the re release of each of those, the pluck of each of those in time, right? So you're gonna pluck, plant, pluck, pluck, pluck. And then on the way down, it's just what's called sequential planting. You just pluck and plant, you, you plant and then pluck the same way that we were doing before. So uh, pluck, plant, pluck, 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 plant, pluck, plant, pluck, and repeating. So I'll do it nice and slow so you can see in here. Okay, notice I'm planting all three of those at once and then plucking them off. This is amazing control for the right hand and for getting the plant. So we could skip this part, but you, you, you'd be missing out. This is really powerful to get used to. And there are many reasons in classical guitar why that comes in handy for some specific arpeggiating uh, techniques that can get very fast. And the only way to do it fast enough is to do the full plant. We're not really working towards that in this exercise, but I'm just throwing it in here so you can get exposed to it and get even more control. Okay, so then you're gonna add these notes, imp improvising around. As soon as I play the note with the pick, I hop onto all those those other three strings with the plant. Very hard to do, uh, really, really worth practicing. You can then do that with other chords, just like we did the uh, other exercises. So just choose any chords, kind of play around with that, but I'll move on to the next exercise. This is number four out of seven. Now we're just gonna alternate the pick with all three of these as a chord. So you're gonna go pick, chord, pick, chord. So of course we have to do a full plant because we're gonna pluck all of them at once. So pick, pl uh, plant, pluck, and then repeat. One question that might come up is, are you sp supposed to plant with the pick? Technically, yes, but we want to be so good at that, so quick with that, that it doesn't feel necessarily um, like a plant as much. We're really having to work on it with the fingers. When you plant with the pick, you are going to get a little bit of a clicking sound, but um, really with the pick as well, uh, a consistent sound has this tiny moment of kind of check-in, preparing, am I doing, you know, am I going to get the tone that I know that I want? So if you look, I'm actually doing that landing with the pick and then plucking. Let me try to do it without. I'm still planting a tiny bit, even with the pick, okay? So we're alternating now, uh, pick, chord, pick, chord, pick, chord. Again, planting, I'm just gonna, you're gonna be sick of me talking about that. It's the secret. So this is what you do after you get used to just doing it with the right hand. I'm just doing any order of notes, just improvising, having fun with it. I 
have a bunch of videos on scales. Uh, if you're, you know, need to know the structure of the minor scale, check out my theory series as well as my scale series. I will put uh, links to both of those in the description. Okay, and then you do that with, with some other chords. I'm always just using those chords as an example, but you know, you might go um, anything you want. Here's D minor seven, here's D diminished, C major seven. alternating between those. Okay, and the fifth exercise, and this is the last kind of chordal one, then we'll do the two lead guitar exercises for hybrid picking. Um, this one, we're just plucking all of them at once, right? So they're not necessarily in order of difficulty, but they are all different and they are all important. So we're just... This one can be, it depends on what you're used to. This can be more difficult. And so as you do this, as boring as this can be with just the open strings, you're listening for is it consistent every time? You know, am I, am, am I prepared with the planting and knowing what I'm gonna get? And uh, unique to this and, and very important and specific to this is are the notes even in this chord, right? Is one popping out more than another? Can you get them all the velocity equal on every note there? Amazing practice to sit there and do that. And someone might be like, what are you practicing? What are you doing? Like. Because uh, it's funny, people around sometimes don't they think well, you're you're not playing a song, right? What are you practicing? But like, if what's going on in your head is the real practicing, right? It's not this; it's listening for it, feeling for it. What note? What notes are you hearing? That balance between them. All. So of course, once you get that, and notice I get this kind of the the, uh, the shortness of it because. There's this space in between from the planting. That's good. That's on purpose. And then you can try to, you know, do you have the control to not have that gap? To still plant, but have it be so brief and so secure with where you're going to play that uh, you don't need to stop it. So now you're trying to play. So I notice when I switch to that, I'm a little less consistent. So I'll do a little more planting and then come back to it, right? So you're kind of like optimizing. We are calibrating. Okay, so again, if we want to use some other chords, whatever we want. I do think this one is, is simple in concept, but I think it's harder than the others. All right, now for the lead guitar playing, the single note playing for our solos, for our improvisations, depending on what you're into, what your goals are, this might be the thing you're waiting for with hybrid picking. Uh, you know, a lot of rock guitar or metal guitar hybrid picking is about using this technique to sp speed things up and it really does help. Um, it's great for any kind of lead playing, any kind of improvisation. Um, and so this is gonna, the first way I'm gonna recommend doing this is that we, first of all, we need to know a scale form. So I'm playing the C major scale form or or a natural minor scale form uh, in the fifth position. Uh, again, check out my scale series where I have a video for every scale type and how to map it out and how to specifically practice it all over the guitar if you need that. Um, but that's the scale form I'm gonna use. And then I want you to practice with a melodic thirds pattern. I sometimes call this the every other note pattern, but people were kind of like, hey, that, that label doesn't make sense, but I, I always called, called it that. But it's a melodic thirds pattern where you go up a third and then you go down one note and you go up a third, go down a note. We should be able to do that with every single scale that we ever work on, uh, every scale position. And every all of that so dun, 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 so that's the pattern I'm doing it with all with the pick right now but now when you are crossing strings I'm gonna play the when I'm gonna cross strings and play the bottom note and then the next note up is up a string you use one of your fingers I'm just gonna use the M finger the uh, the middle finger to hybrid pick so every time I'm crossing strings check it out I'll do it nice and slow And if you're watching for the planting, the planting is definitely there. When I pause, I'm ready. I'm sitting here ready. 
it's, I, I had this down even before I put this note down. Cause the left hand, you want to put the note down right when you're going to actually pluck it, right? Right when the sound's going to come. Otherwise you get a sound ahead of time. So this is down on the string before the left hand even goes down. So, okay. So I'll do it a little faster just to demonstrate. And you only can, you only need to worry about doing that in a descending way. You can work on it uh, descending as well. Uh, of course, but I'll recommend just specifically being able to do it um, ascending from the bottom. So that's with a major scale structure or natural minor scale structure, same thing in this case, depending on what you call the root. Um, I want you to also do that with a pentatonic scale. So we just take the pentatonic scale form, we'll take A minor pentatonic or C major pentatonic, same physical shape there, and then we're gonna play note, skip a note up, down a note, skip a note up. This is no longer melodic thirds because the scale structure doesn't allow it to be, but I'm doing the same thing. When I'm skipping up a string, I'm hybrid picking. Check it out. That's a great way to work on this, and you'll get the habit down you can do all kinds of other exercises. I'm just recommending these to get started, but if you could you know, start working on using that same intuition and skipping strings or whatever you want, uh, skipping more strings, having bigger jumps. But that's a great way to get started with using that. This notation you see on the screen right here where I'm actually playing this, and it's all written out. I have a PDF that you can grab of that if you just want the kind of the tab in front of you. I'll put a link in the description to that. And that's that's why I have that written out. You can download that. So if I improvise a little bit and just throw that in. Every every time, not maybe not every time, but uh, I very intuitively can now play with my finger when I'm crossing strings. So I'm intentionally staying kind of next um, on consecutive strings. But the same thing applies if I skip a string. Okay, and the seventh hybrid picking exercise is to play harmonically uh, with your lead playing. So uh, the way I'm gonna recommend mapping that out at first is just taking that same pentatonic scale, don't need to do the diatonic scale, the seven note scale with this, but I want you to play those same two notes harmonically, so at the same time. So you're playing those two notes, then these, then these. Every pair of two notes, hybrid picking them. This is very cool. You'll hear, hear players like Stevie Ray Vaughan use that all the time. Not so exclusively, takes warming up into. So just be able to kind of go up and down with that. Take your time with it. Very cool sound. You get a fourth interval and then you get a third interval and then a fourth again. So you get very cool sound. Um, the other way that's harmonic uh, that that is really common again, Stevie Ray Vaughan will do stuff like this all the time where where you use a drone note, you hold a note. Say you're gonna hold this note with your pinky in the scale form. Right, so I'm using a finger, really, it can be any finger you want. I'm using a lot of the middle finger there. Um, or, okay, this is what I did in the intro. Something like that, right? And it, so in the intro lick of the lesson, I did that right, kind of droning this open D, open E, and playing with the blues scale there. So this is a very cool, uh, kind of really really sophisticated sounding way to use this. Where you're just adding that one drone note, but it, it just one extra note really fills up the sound. So if I improvise with those ideas a little bit, I might just do some pretty straightforward single stuff, single note. and try to throw those in. Right, so it takes some getting used to and, and kind of exploring around with, oh, what am I gonna like? And I, I gotta get in the zone of something like that sometimes. 
So I just jump in and try a bunch of stuff and it kind of let it refine itself and even in even kind of warming up to it in that way. So you can make up your own finger combinations as well. Obviously you can do more than just up and down with the, the pick and then the sequential order. You can start to mix it up a little bit or find your own things to do. Um, but that just gives you a nice, really concrete structure of seven things to work on to be able to do. If you get used to those, you're gonna naturally find your own way to um, make the sound your own or break out of that and create your own finger patterns and, and whatnot. I already mentioned that you can get that PDF of the every other note pattern or the, the melodic uh, pattern for the pentatonic scale to do that. Um, another thing that might be really useful though is my chord chart that I made called Chords with Color. It's just a huge, amazing chord chart with a lot of the theory knowledge um, shown on the page, but just a bunch of shapes and, and just shapes that if you're into kind of a finger picking style and wanting to do hybrid with chords, um, it'll just give you a bunch of vocabulary to do that with. If you're more interested in the lead stuff, then grab the, the uh, pentatonic scale pattern PDF. Both of those things are totally free and they'll be linked below in the description. So question for you, which of these seven hybrid picking exercises do you think will be the most useful and the most applicable for your playing and your goals? Is it just straight up the idea of planting? Is it maybe playing all the chords at once so you're not always strumming? Is it maybe the lead stuff where you're using the drone because that sounds like a cool bluesy sound that you like? There's a lot of directions and branches you can go here. So let me know which one of those is up your alley and going to help your playing out the most. Let me know in the comments below. If you genuinely liked this hybrid picking lesson, please hit that like button. It really helps out the channel and it really helps other guitar students find the material that they're looking for so they can keep getting better and uh, enjoying music. And thank you so much for all the wonderful comments. I'm really doing this to help you out, help people out wanting to learn guitar. So the comments really help me know that I'm on the right track with that vision. Special thanks to Ashton Harris, who on my modes video commented and said, wow, I've been trying to study modes lately and have been very confused as to why half of guitar teachers are just saying to start on a different note and half are saying to actually change the notes. Four minutes into this video and it all makes sense Thank you. Just wanted to feature that comment and say that it means a lot. If you're interested in checking out that video about modes and understanding how modes work on the guitar and what the heck they are or how to practice them, then I'll put a link in the description to that modes video and you can check it out there. I put out a lesson every week. Next week, I'm starting a four part mini series on how to play jazz guitar, walking bass lines while playing chords at the same time. A great thing to do if you're interested in jazz to use hybrid picking for. So I'm starting that next week. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.